Hi there, Dave Earl with you with uh, another tip and trick. We're going to talk about low-end stuff because that's kind of the uh, theme behind the tip and tricks this time. So I'm going to give you three different ones. The first one is going to be talking about the ESP. So in the ESP, it's an instrument. Look at this guy. He's ancient. He's been around a very long time. Uh, software instrument called the ESP that was created back in the early 2000s. And um, the whole point behind this is sort of emulate the old analog synthesizers of yore. And we have six different waves that we can create here. Actually, <laughs> we have five different waves, and then we have a noise generator. Now, I think that noise is awesome, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to turn the volume down on this track quite a bit. And I'm going to show you just how nasty noise can sound. I'm going to turn resonance down, turn the frequency up on my filter. Uh, I'll give us a little bit of attack so it doesn't just like hit us like a freight train. Turn down the overdrive, turn all this stuff down, and basically sort of zeroing everything out. And I'm going to hit a key. Okay, well, there's the uh, waves crashing on a beach in an 8-bit game in 1986, right? So that's mostly what people think about when they think of noise. Now I can turn the attack down, you know, and it's it's noise. Now there's a lot of interesting things you can do with noise, but what I want to talk about is just doing some stuff with the low end. So we're going to start off by taking that noise and in the filter we're going to turn the resonance way up. And what's going to happen is it's going to sound as though the noise is no longer an, uh, just white noise, which is all sort of frequencies being uh, sort of random amplitude at all your frequencies. Uh, it's going to actually single out some specific frequencies. So check it out. I'm going to turn my filter down a bit. This is a uh, low pass filter. I'll turn the sustain up so we can just hear it forever. Now I'm going to turn the resonance up. So it starts to sort of self-oscillate. It's, it's becoming an oscillator. Now listen what happens when I pull that frequency down. That's some low end, my friends. So if we just hit it, Sometimes it's nice to put that underneath a kick or put it under a bass or something. And if this is our key tracking down here, if we turn 3-3, three, three, it's very tonal because we're shifting around. You know, right now we're using noise. It's still noise. But it actually sounds pitched. And that's because we're doing key tracking. It's opening and closing the filter according to my position on the keyboard. So the next thing we're going to do with this is we're going to turn up the ADSR intensity on the filter. So this is basically taking the envelope here and applying it to the filter. I'm going to turn this up slightly. Oh my god, I think I have a kick. Now velocity is also affecting it. which can be a lot of fun. You can actually alter the velocities if you're doing programming and get some interesting stuff. But let's turn the velocity filter down. So we're really just relying on our envelope generator over here. I'll turn the volume up on the track a bit. Turn a little overdrive up. Pretty interesting, right? Now if you turn the attack up ever so slightly, you won't get that click. It's 
So it's nice, it's warm, you can really shape it using the envelope generator. It's really cool. So anyway, that's what I believe is one of the unsung heroes of Logic. Now, of course, white noise does all kinds of other things. Um, you could sit there and turn it into a hi-hat if you turn the frequency up. Right now, we're, it's very low, so you know, we're, you know, when you have this uh, cutoff turned all the way down, it's more of a kick range, but if we turn it up, it starts to sound a little like a snare. which is very cool. Now, sometimes people like to do dive bombs. So I'll turn this frequency all the way down, turn the resonance up, and I'll turn this decay way up. That doesn't sound like much. Turn on my ADSR intensity. Now, turn this knob back a bit, and we end up with our dive bombs. If you have really good speakers, you'll hear it just continuing to go down. Pull it the other way and it goes the opposite direction. Oop, there we go. I gotta turn this up. Sorry. So there you have a riser. Because we've inverted the envelope generator. Cool. But of course, you have to pull this all the way up because we've inverted it. So there you go. ES2. A couple of interesting ideas for the low end. Um, you can use that um, as sort of your sub subharmonic creator if you want, or um, you can use it underneath a kick. Or if you wanted to, you could put it underneath another bass sound, and with the key tracking, um, you should be able to get it fairly close. And um, you know, it just adds a little bit of thickness to a bass without really, you know, without being a sine wave, which is normally what people would do to sort of you know help support a bass. I notice that when I use noise um, with really good key tracking, it tends to still sound just a little bit better than a sine wave. Um, it's just got a little bit more going on. So there you go, ESP, uh, some low-end theories using the ESP. Now, I'm going to do another video, and we're going to talk a little bit about the ES2. <laughs> very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind I, I've discovered electronic music and you know San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.